Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering motivation and this year, Monday morning, rise and shine. And this morning here, we're looking at the topic, idealism, embrace anarchism, will not work in a sinful world. So idealism embraces anarchism, will not work in a sinful world, is what we're looking at here this morning as I try to condense that thought. So welcome, hopefully the blessed weekend, you ready to take on uh, the challenges of this week and um, let us pray. Our Father, Lord, and I thank you again for the blessings of rest. I thank you for the blessings to your Lord of being able to study, observe, and to be able to analyze what's happening in the society and in the world. Pray, Lord, that you may be with us as we uh, look at these things, and may you bless us in our lives that we might always be organized and um, efficient. May you bless us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. So again, I'm looking at this idea here that idealism embraces anarchism, um, will not work in a sinful world. So we live in a sinful world, and um, I'm sure you've heard some of the arguments by various different um, intellectuals or, you know, you just your local philosophers who will um, argue um, for the idea of idealism, you know, the idealistic concepts here um, that they put forward. And as um, I want to analyze this this morning and talk about this and uh, more so um, talk about it to get to the point of that in our lives, it's important um, to um, be able to be organized. It's important to have order in our lives. And a lot of what we talk about, people talk about idealism, um, the idealistic concepts of embracing anarchism or anarchy uh, does not lead to success in the life. It does not lead to good production, good order, and um, streamline. Nothing will be streamlined in this type of mindset. Uh, it leads to a lot of confusion and a lot of wasted labor. So we don't want to do that. Uh, as I say, we want to be very successful at the things that we do and we want to be able to um, uh, be as efficient as we can. You know, we have one life to live and as we live this life, we don't want to have a lot of waste of time and be a waste of space because we embrace philosophies like that and many people embrace these philosophies and so i want to talk about this this morning but before i go into far far much into it or anywhere into it i want to talk about um this um idea here um by uh, going first into before i define what anarchy is i want to go into reading isaiah chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 firstly and then 10 through 12 Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, and then 10 through um, 12. And it says, and I, will give, um, and I will give children to be their princes, and babies shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. And um, neighbor, the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. Then verse 10 says, Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. My, O oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the ways of thy paths. So I've been thinking about this a lot since of late, looking at some different type of material and then thinking about the whole idea of the breakdown of society and how often the breakdown of society is simply, uh, not so much the breakdown of society, but the breakdown of you know, um, leadership, the breakdown of organization, the breakdown of order. And when you have this, it's normally starting in the home or in the local institutions. And as it goes in the local institution and primarily to the home, it infuses itself in the whole society and lead to anarchy and chaos. And this is not what we want. And we might not be able to stop the society in going the way that it wants to go. But we surely can affect the homes that we live in and we surely can affect the church that we go to. So we don't have this breakdown of leadership and so the Bible here is very clear what happened in Israel when Israel fell it was clear how Israel fell and it was a lack of 
uh, well, it wasn't a lack of leadership, so to speak. It was a matter of who was leading and who was leading um, created the problem. Because if you don't have leadership, then it leads to um, discord. And when people start talk certain things, it's not so much an issue that they don't have freedom of speech. It's an issue that when you have no strong leadership, um, these theories rise to the top. When you don't have moral leadership, the theories rise to the top. And uh, as you probably know, some of the principles about anarchy came out of the French Revolution and some of it in the Renaissance and stuff like that period of the earth history. So when you don't have good, strong moral leadership, what you end up is that somebody said, well, at least let me try. But when you have good leadership, then it's certain things that are not allowed. So notice here, again, I'll read for you, just going over a little bit here with Isaiah chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 again. It says, I will give children to be their princes. So imagine you have a prince and now uh, children are leading a child. So that's like a vacuum. And that's a terrible thing. You have a vacuum of leadership. This could cause, because if you read a story in the Bible of Israel, oftentimes Israel will lose its adult leaders and all that's left back is a family of the king who is a child. And imagine now a child come to office and a child is going to lead. It, it, just imagine, you, you just it's fascinating. Imagine a 10, 12-year-old um, leading a country. It, what good can come of that? It It is... Throughout the history of Israel, there probably was one child king that had a good experience, and it was because of um, who was around him, his mother, and so forth. But most of it ended in this total disaster, which would be, sit down, how many times you see a child, and you could say that child could lead his household? How many times? Because normally if a child is leading the household, uh, or could take over the leadership of the household, or might even do better, that means the adult parents are, wow, they're real bad. And that's where a lot of this come from. And why I use the word idealism in my topic as it embraces um, anarchism? Because a lot of idealism comes from young people. Young people can be very, are very idealistic for the most part because they see the world and they have no experience. So they think that things are going to go a certain way. You know, I'm gonna give them about ten years of beatings in their lives before they start to become. They start to lose that idealism. So, just imagine a child is in charge, and when the Bible says this, this is not. This is definitely not a parable. This is not a, a concept here. This is literally what was happening in Israel. Children was in charge, and have you been to that? Most churches I've ever been is the children that are in charge. The whole process of all the church function the worship of the church there it is done with the idea that uh is done for the young people and i don't know if it's children in charge or the parents are just using the children as excuse it could be both but there is nothing good can come of that because you're using somebody that has no life experience or maturity no biblical understanding they're carnal in nature they're all about selfishness and you say to them, do life, let's run the system the way you want it. You know, what good can come of that? So notice here, I will give children to be their princes. Not good. And then it says, babies shall rule over them. Definitely not good. And if you read the story of Israel, literally, this is what was happening. Children was babies was ruling over them. And I know, and I've met how many adults that a child could make better decisions than them. So you can imagine now the children running circles around the adults. And I've known many situations where the children basically are the ones that are whipping the parents. They're, the parents are exhausted, you know, the, because the children just basically are so out of control and the parents can't control them. Notice that in verse 5, the people shall be oppressed, every one by another. This is anarchy at best. You know, French Revolution believed they were doing something unique and in that time. But this is anarchy because what it is, is, and I'll talk about it a little bit, is this concept of a stateless state. There's no state, so it's stateless. And so there's no order and there's no proper processes and function. Because every man 
in Israel it often was said every man did according to what was right in his own eyes. There was no leader. It was a leaderless place. And that was, you can read this at the time of the judges. Because what's happening there is every man does what is right in his own eyes. That's anarchy. Because now, what is right for you might not be right for me. There's no system. That means, what's the measurement? Is it inches? Is it pound? Is it feet? We're doing matrix. Um, what is it that we're doing? We're doing matrix. We're doing, what are we doing? So it's just everybody do what they want to do. And who's going to enforce what? Because there's a leader, a state. There's no judge to decide what's right or wrong. It's a judge, judgeless state. So notice that, and the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. <coughs> Sorry, the child shall be behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. And I've been in situations like this. I always remember a few years back, I was in a church, and the elder, one of the elders of the church, went to say hi. You know, right in front of me, the pew, right in front of me. I'm sitting there, and me and my wife was there, and the elder went to say hi to the little kid, a little boy. A uh, boy probably, I don't even know, he was six or five. And the little boy, like, shrugged off the elder. And the elder said, no, I'm just saying hi or whatever. And the little boy started make his hand as if he's going to punch the elder. And the elder was, like, bewildered. He didn't know what to do, and I was like, uh-oh. Uh -oh. And he started making like he's going to punch the elder. And I was like, wow. And the interesting thing enough is that the little boy father was going to preach that and actually preached that um, that day, that Sabbath day. And um, it was, I could just look at her and see people fall in their sleep. It was unreal. You know, it was just like, it was an empty sermon. And I was thinking, man, he, he, he should get down from up off there and go straighten up his home before he's up there. Pre what is he going to preach? And as I say, I watch people fell asleep, just like knocked out while he's preaching. And just a bunch of empty stuff. Nothing to say. What is he going to say? Nothing up there to say. First, you're going to take care of your house. So notice here, it says the base against the honorable. So that means that and then it says the, the child against the ancient. So the children have no respect for the ancient and the honorable person, the, the, the workless people in the society will talk to them anyway and disrespect them. And you see this in a society. And when you see this happening in a society and in any church, I've been in church and I see, you know, you'll have a young girl and she want to fly in the face of the pastor. And the pastor is an honorable person, you know, somebody that I know personally. And when you have that type of environment, it's anarchy. At its best. Now, the people who are behaving like this, the children, the leaders in the church, the you know, the older people in the church, they might not describe it as anarchy. But it is anarchy. And it's 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 it will not lead to anything good. It was the breakdown of the church, breakdown of the family, breakdown of the society. And I've learned over the years that many times what you're trying to reestablish in the church is not worship, but it's actually order. It's actually discipline. It's actually respect and honor for those that are in leadership. Because if you can honor those in leadership in the church, you can't, you can't do it outside. So this is part of, to me, the success of life. But when people have no self-control, nobody they respect. Notice here it says here, going into what happened in Israel, what broke down Israel. It says, say to the righteous that it shall be well with him, but... They, but for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So you, if you live righteous, you'll get the benefits of your lifestyle. And that's so true because, again, if you have, if, if the society has these rude kids and, you know, these, you know, people are out of control and disrespectful and these base kids, if you're living your life and you're living your life as a Christian now and you make sure that your family is in order, and your church is in order, you get the result of that. And it is rightfully so. That should be the result. You should be able to go to church and have a respectable, peaceful worship service and time together and fellowship together and not have the disrespect and confusion what disorderly homes have in it because that's the fruit of your labor. 
That's the fruit of your doings. And it's the same thing in your home. You shouldn't have to be in your home and your kids having you sweating and running on a treadmill. As I say, if 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 I'm going to get um, pressured by a child, the child's going to feel it. And the child's going to be able to know that says, it's going to come at a cost to you. You have to make up your mind what you want to do. Because I've made up my mind what I'm going to do. But you will not have me running a treadmill. You're not stress me out. Because if you stress me out, I'm the adult here. I'm going to stress you. I'm going to put you on so much pressure that you 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 will break because you're a child. You're not an adult. And so when you see this here, it says the righteous shall be well with this. And I've lived to seeing this to be true. It might take some time to straighten the situation out. But I'm going to tell you, you will have peace in your home and in your church. And somebody could tell me what's happening in a thousand churches out there. That there's hell breaking loose. And I'm like, yeah, because there's no leaders. There's children not in leadership. Notice it says, war unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him. Which is true. For the reward of his hand shall be given him. See, God is fair. You have a leaderless home. Well, that should be your reward. You should have chaos and anarchy. Your kids and your wife and everything should be broken, broke wild on you. And that's the result of your, your lack of leadership. And that's the result in the society when there's no leaders, leaders. Notice here, as for my people, children are their oppressors. Women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, or err, err, and destroy the way of thy paths. Right? So whatever path you're working in on or walking in, it's going to be destroyed. Because what it is is that with the way of your path is a is a is a set way. You know, you want to get from point A to point B, you go down a set way. When you have now people who are not concerned with processes and systems, they come in, they come in and they set talk and they start saying, Oh no, that's not the way to do this. Really? That's not the way to do it. And they confuse the whole thing. Confuses it. And who, again, children and women rule over them. So this is why so many churches you go, is female elders. But guess who is leading in the home also? Female elders and female and, and the children. A child running a home is a disaster. It'll never work. But many people believe, oh no, we should be able to have freedom. Because they're anarchic or they have anarchism as their philosophy in their head. So I'm going to read this quick note here. I just pull this definition, these two definitions from Wikipedia. And it's um, first one I'm reading here is anarchy. Anarchy is a society, entity, group of people, or a single person that rejects hierarchy. Um, the word originally meant leaderless, leaderlessness. But in 80, 1840, Pierre Joseph Proud of, Proudhon um, adopted the term in his treatise, What is Property, to refer to a new political philosophy, anarchism, which advocated stateless society based on voluntary association. In practical terms, anarchy can refer to the curtailment or abolish, abolition of, of traditional forms of government and institutions. It can also designate a nation that has no system of government or central rule. Anarchy is primarily advocated by anarchists, individuals who propose replacing government with voluntary institutions. So that's anarchy. So if, if you look back, uh, as I said, this, the text I just read, and if you spend some time reading um, Jeremiah, Isaiah, um, Ezekiel, many of the minor prophets, you could quickly really realize that what is this being described here and also the book of Judges, where the judges lead. In between each judge, Israel will always revert to what you call every man do what was right in his own eyes or anarchy. It's just you voluntarily do. So if this person, if you want to do right by me, you make sure I'm, I'm good. You hook me up, so to speak. But if you don't want to do right, I'm in trouble. Because there's no set rules. It's just every man do what was right in his own eyes. So if you look at this, he says here that anarchy can be an entity, like a society, 
so a whole state, a whole um, country, um, run by the anarchic, um, anarchic principle, or it could be an entity, or it could be a group of people that d decide, you know, so you could have a colony, or you could have a, 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 a what you call it, like, they would do these compounds, and in the compound, they could decide on this compound, we just have anarchy. There's no set rules. There's no mother. There's no father. There's no wife. There's no husband. There's no leader. There's no rule to do with anything. You can dress or you can undress. You can drink or you can not drink. You can take drugs or you can not take drugs. It's just no rule. But when you think about it also, it says it can be a single person. Right? It could be a group of people. A group of people could be a family. But you could have families that that's how the family run. It's anarchy. But it, they won't say, for the most part, some will, but they won't say this is how we operate. They just, they just operate. Everybody, they call it like an open marriage. The kids do whatever they want to do. There's no rule because the rule will break down um, self-confidence, self, self they'll say. And, you know, why should one person be above another? And then you look at them and say, but, you know, those are the kids, right? Um, they have not the maturity to decide what to eat, when to eat, how to eat. They don't, they don't understand that. They don't learn those things yet. And, but in their mind, well, there's no rules. So why would that matter? Just whatever goes. More, more on that in a second. So the word originally meant it says leaderlessness. So imagine you have a society and there's leaderlessness. And remember, in many homes, there's no leader. You know, the Bible says the husband is the head of the house. In many homes, and uh, both secular and Christian, even if they don't claim it, there's leaderlessness. As a matter of fact, in many homes, you go to the female, and they're the first one. The guy would often not say that the husband is the head of the household. As a lot of times you hear female, that would say, oh, the husband is the head of the household. But the way they operate is leaderlessness. They will quick to make the statement and say, yes, I, my husband should be the leader of the home. And you will hear the guy saying, yeah, I need to be the leader per se. But it is leaderlessness. And what that result in, I, what Isaiah just described. So like his treatise is, what is property? That's a good question. Because what is property? If there's leaderlessness, property becomes in question. Borders become in question. So there shouldn't be no border. And if there should be no border, then you should have no right to, you start losing your rights. So then like in the Bible, it talks about don't covet thy neighbor's property. It does not say, it doesn't say don't covet thy neighbor. You know, he says don't covet thy neighbor really spouse, but you know, it's a wife, his property is made, his handmade, nothing. Whatever is thy neighbor's, whatever it is. But with leaderlessness, that's rules. If, you know, those things are rules and that means that can, you can define. If I can define my property, I could define also my county or my state or my country. Because that's ownership. And so with leaderlessness, there is none of that. Because the leader would have to be able to enforce that. So if you notice here real quickly is, is what is property, uh, is the philosophy of anarchism is a stateless society or voluntary association. But remember, voluntary association really is anarchy, it's really chaos, because I could volunteer today and I could change my mind tomorrow. Who's going to hold me responsible for whatever contract, whatever association, whatever I commit to, because it's leaderlessness. And so that normally anarchy is a breakdown of society because anarchy is against society. But we can take those same principles and we can bring them into our homes. And we can talk about, like I like to talk about on Monday, success, and automatically you have failure. Because without leadership, there is no deci de decision maker. There is no lawmaker. There is no rule. And so there's ultimate chaos. And as I say, in practice, it doesn't work. Why? Because I've never seen it work. I've never seen a volunteer society or volunteer group of people work. As a matter of fact, I've watched quite a few documentaries because I'm always fascinated with, with this stuff of different groups of people who go to an island somewhere 
or they go to some location in a state that is very loose inside of America or in some country and they will try to live through this anarchy principle. And most of the time it collapses because when there's a disagreement, it's hard to fix the disagreement. When there's a disagreement between two parties, you can't fix it because there is no set rule. There is no set property. So when I, if I encroach on what is not your property, but you feel like it's your property, you can, you will feel, you know, then there's not no way to d resolve those differences. And all the time, they dissolve into fights. Why? Because as my topic is, idealism embraces anarchism will not work in a sinful world. Because all of a sudden, human beings have attachment. The natural heart of man is to attach to certain things and take ownership, even if he claim he believe in anarchy. And if I take ownership of something or I build up something and you come and say, oh, this is mine. And I'm like, you mean this piece of property here that I developed? Yeah, it's mine. Or I need to put a house on it. And I'm like, why don't you go develop yours across the town? Oh, well, you are doing the work. I'm going to take your work. Covetousness in the heart of man will always make anarchy fall apart. Because you could work to develop something and somebody comes in and say, I want it. Just think about even in relationships. You could work hard to develop a friendship or a marriage. And now the marriage is working good because it takes years um, for a person to become one with another person. For them to gel together. And somebody else could see that gelling of, as I say, a marriage or a friendship. And they say, man, I wish I had a friend like that. Or I wish I had a marriage like that. And they could say, well, you guys work hard of it, but I want in or I want one of you. That's anarchy and chaos. And then now the person come in and steal what was not they didn't work for. But you work so hard for it. So anyhow, this is why that can't work. It, it does not work in practical, in practical, in a practical everyday. And you, as I say, you can go online and look into this stuff and you'll be fascinated in how they've collapsed all the time. Because order and system build success. Chaos is problematic. This is why if you follow some of what China been doing, where they will steal the intellectual property rights of American corporation, that is very painful because if you work hard and you put the R&D, you put millions of dollars and millions of hours, literally sometime over years and decades into developing a product. Then somebody come along and say, well, I'll manufacture the product for you and I'll sign an agreement that I won't steal your intellectual property. And then goes ahead and steal it. It is stealing your labor without permission. That can that is not can be that is very painful and that to me is like again another form of anarchy because they're not doing the labor the work but they want to take the benefits right so that is problematic so also um, if you notice here I'll say that the, there's no system of government or central rule so you don't know what is right or what is wrong you don't know what rules you're operating under. So we live in a state and all states normally have a constitution and certain orderly process how to transition from one leader to the next. There's there's a process in place. When you take away that, there's no process in place. Like when you deal with like a regular family, uh, you know, when a person is a child, they're a child and there's a passage or a process for them to come up into adulthood. But if you have a child and they're 12, and you give him the responsibility of a 25-year-old. You're going to be trouble. You're going to be trouble. And that's where the problem is. And in many homes, that's how they operate. There's, it's leaderless. Everybody do what they want to do. You can't tell nobody what to do. You can't talk to them. You can't beg them. You can't do whatever. And it leads to the breakdown of the home, breakdown of the church, the society, and the community. And this is where this is a problem. So they do voluntary institution instead of government. Government is simply just leadership. Now here a, a hierarchy. A rock hierarchy is um, is simply um, where is an arrangement of items. 
So it could be an object, a name, a value, or a category. All right, that's not per se the, the meaning we're going for, but it explains the meaning. In other words, is uh, from lower to higher, in which the items are representative of being above, below, or at the same level, one to another. Hierarchy is an important concept in a wide variety of fields, such as philosophy, mathematics, computer science, organizational theory, system theory, or social science, and also in political philosophy. So hierarchy um, is represented um, here as there is layers. And even when you read the Bible, you can see very clearly that the, the, the Godhead um, is, is first, and then secondly, you have the archangel, you have the, you have the angel, all of a sudden the seraphim and the cherubims and the, and the rest of the angels. I, all of a sudden that slipped my mind. Now, so what is that? It is, is a system of, um, of hierarchical government, you know, two wing, four wing, six wings, archangel, you know, or the, the, the covering cherubs and then the, the God of himself. That's what it is. Even in our creation, the Bible says we're made above the animals, but we're made lower than the angels. It, that's uh, a system of one thing is hierarchical to the other. So in a world, it is it is important for organization because when decisions need to be made, when problems arise, you need to know who is in charge, who to call, who has to lead, because then you lead to confusion, especially in situations of emergency. You know, when the, you ring the phone, um, one need to know what does the police do, what the fireman does, what the EMT does, or else there's confusion because then instead of the police is trying to deal with a criminal element, and a, you know, so say there's a person that light a building, so it's an arson. Somebody calls and says somebody lit the building. You need the EMT to do what the EMT does. You need the fireman to do what the fireman does. You need the police to do what the police do but even after that now there need to be investigation who leads an investigation who whatever it, it, it is it leads for order order but when you remove this type of order out of the system what you leave with is a lot of confusion and this is why in society and in our lives the issue often is is that if we don't have order in our homes then it it carries out into the society and then in the society, you have the society is made up of individuals and families. And then that disorganized, this order is, uh, f you know, infused into the society. And it creates a lot of chaos because nobody knows who is doing what and who is saying what. And everybody's doing what is right in their own eyes. And there's no leader. And a lot of voices today are saying this is how society is supposed to go. We need to get from a patriarchal, um, hierarchical system, but we need to move to a basically anarchical system where everybody do what they want to do, and there should be no rules in place because rules are bad. Now, often these discussions are centered around lawlessness. So we normally talk about we want to legalize the legalization of marijuana. Now, I say this first because... A lot of time when you hear people talk to me, when I, it's always connected this idea of legalization of drugs with um, the talk about anarchy, um, and drug become one of the big issue. There's other things I'm gonna talk about, but drugs become one of the big issue because this idea of being arrested for use of drugs, Schedule One, especially drugs, become a big problem because people don't want. They want to be able to use drugs and no repercussions. Ignoring the side effects and the breakdown of the body and the deaths and overdose that are caused by drugs, period. When I'm talking about drugs, I'm talking about psychotropic drugs, drugs that affect the mental state of a human being. Um, because nobody's arguing against or per se for drugs, for diabetes and high blood pressure and so forth. What we're ta they're talking about here is psychotropic medication that you should be free to take all the drugs you want, when you want it, how you want it. So legalization of drugs, including marijuana and other drugs, are what 
talking about. Some people just say you only should legalize marijuana. Other people says um, a lot of voices out there say you should legalize all drugs. That means cocaine, crack, heroin, fentanyl, whatever. For just you know, if I want it, I can buy it to use it recreationally. Often, also, you have this idea here that prostitution should be legalized. Um, why prostitution? Because they say two consenting adults need to be able to do trade um, independent of the interference of the state. And so they claim that this should be legalized and um, there should be no rules around that. Right? And also, this idea of pedophilia, sometimes some people argue. Uh, I think they tend to argue less in public, but some of them do. There was a famous guy that was big in the in the um, conservative libertarian movement, and I can't remember his name. Is I think it's a guy from England, and um, but yet he was he's homosexuals and he he promoted ped, you know talk about pedophilia that he was um, molested as a child. I can't remember his name, but he um, he would promote this type of philosophy which is basically legalization of pedophilia so that you should not, not have a legalization, but you should not have a law against it that, you know, you should be able to have relationships with whoever you want, basically, you know, consented. And when, when you think about that, that's you can see the, the, the logics in anarchy and this concept because, again, and what Isaiah was saying, if you have a child and a child is leading the family and a child at 11 say, I want to date, a 50 year old the family not gonna say no because guess what happened the child is leading the home who are the parents to talk that's what the child loves the child should have what they love including ice cream and a 50 year old continue here unbridled capitalism so that means you should not have any restriction on business because that is a state making rules and setting um, laws, each adult should be able to execute business transaction independent of any other person telling them how they should operate. That means whoever is doing business, you should be free to be able to do business because remember, it's a stateless society and it's a voluntary association. So you should be able to voluntary, volu um, freely associate with who you want to freely do associate with you should freely be able to do business with whoever you want to do business with and remember it's not anybody's business so when we talk about consumer protection um entities like consumer protection entities like the ftc federal trade commission you know looking over how business do business how business advertise business you know looking at um fcc ftc i'll talk about how communication companies function how um you know how you do advertisement is a false advertisement all of that a stateless system and anarchy would remove because they will see many of the functions of the federal government as being um hierarchical as being patriarchal as being um, um basically the government trying to rule us and tell us what to do and yet, those concepts are rigged in the idea that basically, um, basically, human beings are not sinful, and that human beings should allow to. If you're an adult and somebody lied to you and you fall for the lie, that's your business. It's two consenting adults, and that's where the, the problem comes in, because human beings are crooked and lie, and they will take advantage of even adults. The adults who don't have enough brain power to figure out that it's a lie. They'll believe it. If somebody come out with a product and they say, this product, like a few years back, there's a product called Coral Calcium, and it was advertised as a product to he heal every disease, I guess, known to man. All you have to do is just take this Coral Calcium and you'll be healed. And they marketed for years, and I knew adults who were sensible, professional with degrees that were buying it and believe it. And they would take it and next you know they have an heart attack and all kind of problems. It didn't do anything for them. And there was never any research to prove the first different disease it could heal. But the guys who sold it made millions of dollars. And what happened, I think it was the FTC and the FDA went the FDA 
I'm like, yeah, I'm saying that right. The federal, yeah. Mm-hmm. The FDA went after them and got them to have to turn over back all that money and try to refund a lot of the money back to the consumers because they never proved the efficacy of it. But on, in anarchy, somebody would say, what right is the government have to go after liars who lie to the general public to sell them products? And it is the same thing. Somebody has to be in charge also because in a sinful world, people want to take advantage of your children. People want to take advantage of your spouse, your wife. And somebody needs to say, I'm here to protect my household. And so it is also in the church. And so it is in the society. But if you have unbridled capitalism, and as I say, the sad reality is many people who lean conservative libertarian, you would think those people who are more Bible, they claim to believe in the Bible, they would be the one who say, no, you can't have unbridled capitalism. But ironically, in the society that makes me scratch my head often, I hear from them are saying, oh no, we need to be a free association. Um, no, no, no type of hierarchy, but yet they're supposed to be the most hierarchical because they're normally the ones that lean for wars and they lean for police to be able to enforce rules. So while they're saying police should enforce rules, they're um, the ones that are more supposed to be more free to do what you want to do. It's a strange. I, I, I think many, this is mental illness because you go to many, many of these places that are, say, the Bible Belt. So down south across towards Texas, and this is the place you find more prostitution, more go-go bars, more strip clubs, um, more problems with the drugs. The more uh, Many of these conservative areas have massive problems with drug overdose, West Virginia, Tennessee, those places. So, you know, lower education, a lot of breakdown in society. You say, well, I understand. They're supposed to be conservative, but yet they lead more libertarian, more more one of guns um, on bandana, on their belts, on their shoe buckle, the guns everywhere so they can shoot at at any standing position or seating position, I guess. Uh, you be like, man, it's like, and then they say the liberals want to control everything. So I'm thinking, this life is weird because liberals are supposed to be more libertarian than anarchists. But yet, you go into liberal areas, a lot of time you find them more of rules. And then the areas that are conservative, that's supposed to be more for rules and laws, they're more liber, libertarian, liberty, madness. Is The society is crazy. And then some areas now where you go, like in the Seattle, Washington area, some of those areas, this is where you have groups like, all of a sudden I forget their name, you know, this, these groups that protest and they do violent protests. And I'm like, that's strange. It's like the, the, the you know, people are, people, and that's where you need leadership because people are crazy and sin make us crazy. We sometimes go against our own principle hard and not think about it. That's what the Bible says. The mind is desperately wicked and who can understand it? You can't get it. It's, it's hard to understand human beings on the sin because they do the opposite of what they, they're supposed to do. Now, so unbridled capitalism is again another thing that is promoted by people who believe in anarchy um, because they believe that um, you should be able to just do whatever business you can with anybody and there should be no government intrusion into that business. So you should be able to for making money, chop all the trees down, pollute all the rivers, as long as you're profitable. Profitability becomes the God. Um, and the idea of nature, human beings, collateral damage, just no, there's no stop to it. Most wars are fought because of unbridled capitalism. But that's why most wars are fought in foreign country because the capitalists, who is anarchist, they can go to another country, start a war, in order to suck resources out of the country. That's unbridled capitalism. It's basically capitalizing through guns to get what you want from others while you can get it here. As a matter of fact, you read this story a lot in the Bible. When you, there's no strong um, um, defense system in a nation, foreign entities or local entities will come attack to steal to get spoils. And what you normally have is that the moment you have a strong leader, the strong leader will stand up and 
repel and organize his men to repel um, crooks that want to come and steal. Uh, because basically a lot of those wars are not wars because there's an issue. There's this war because people want to steal. So that's what strong leadership does. You put up strong defenses. Also in this type of discussion about anarchy, there's this idea of no marriage rights. Um, because there's rights when you're in the marriage and if there's a breakup of the marriage, there's rights that the individual as a separate um, get. And in a stateless system, you're just making... Um, voluntary contracts uh, so you can swindle a person, defraud a person, you know, from what is rightfully theirs within the marriage and also if the marriage is dissolved. But in anarchy, there's no such thing as marriage. It's just, you just come together on a whatever agreement. And then when somebody get burned, there's no recourse because there's no rule and there's nobody to defend the rule. There's no local elder. Uh, you think about in a state system, the elder in the system technically is the judge and the sheriff or uh, whatever people fill those positions, the, the district the district attorney or the public prosecutor, or, you know, whatever. Those are the secular elders. These are what the people say. These are elders over us. In our church, the elder would be the pastor, the, 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 the elder, the Bible worker. Those people, those would be the elder. Those would be settled differences. And so when things are good, they work. When things are bad, they step in. Those are your local elders. In a state system, the local elder a lot of the time is backed by guns. In a church, it's supposed to be backed by the Bible and morality. But either way now, when you start to have anarchy step in, whether by philosophy or by practice, those elders lose their power to be able to have strong rules or they're defract. You know, they say, get rid of this person. No one, no strong leaders. And you can see in church many times, this is why a lot of the time people who are strong preachers become independent because what the church will do is start pushing anybody that have a strong voice, especially male leadership, out of the church and say, we don't want you here because you might affect and you might stop anarchy and the confusion where anything goes. You know, there, there's um, some churches you go, these, these cretins that come in, they disturb this, the Bible studies, the Sabbath school, they disturb the discussions, they disturb everything. In a church with strong leadership, you get bounced. You can't come in here and do that. It's just not going to happen. Or it's not going to happen. The person will try, but they're going to learn real quick. Leadership, and the same thing in the home. There's certain things that just don't go on in a strong male leader home. You can't come here and do certain things and talk certain way. And have certain access to the children and to my wife and so forth and so on. This is why this leads for success. But when you embrace anarchism in a sinful world, it leads for failure. So no marriage rights. There's no right in the marriage. You don't have certain privileges. So that means, some, that, what does that mean? That means the husband can't say, hey, look, this is, this, is, this is what you need to do. Nor the wife can say, hey, this is, this is what your responsibility is. And the children can't say, you have that responsibility to me. You brought me in this world. This is your responsibility. There's no leadership. And there's no right. So child support, you know, spousal support, all of that gone in anarchy. And then you lead to men who are not honorable men. Women who are not honorable. Children who are not obedient. And learn, develop, learn how to function in society. This leads to no whatever. A stateless society also, as I mentioned earlier, is the result of all of this. So there's no state. And if there's no state, we do what we want to do. And as I said, the advocates for this are especially always like to talk about drugs because they want to take all the drugs. They want to be able to do pedophilia, prostitution, all this type of stuff because it works when there's no state. The state enforces these rules. And so you could find people who are like, you know, one of the famous liberty, the, probably the most famous libertarian I know is called Ron Paul. He's a, he's a, he's a, a conservative Republican leader from Texas. And if you look at his principles, it might sound pretty on the surface, but it's always ironic that the person least conservative, but he's probably the most famous, at least I know, libertarian. Promoting libertarian principles that basically, um, you know, this concept of uh, liberty and freedom, which is part of our our basic tenant in America here, 
But the problem is, is you can take that to an extreme or you can take that on the surface and it leads to problem. Because you need liberty. But part of laws and rules is that it protects liberty. You see, um, I should be free to do certain things. But again, if somebody sees, again, a, a good example. If somebody sees it that they can create a rule, um, set a trap for me, lock me up in prison, have me work in hard labor for a dollar hour so I can work and then make profit for whoever set the rule and set me up, then that takes away my liberty. But somebody could say, well, that's unbridled capitalism. That's part of anarchy. And that's the problem with that. We don't want anarchy. When we need rules and everybody follows the rules, we want a system of government which is blind to the individuals. It just set the rule and we all follow the rule. We don't want this type of stuff. So we don't want it in our society. And most essentially, we don't want it in our homes. And we don't want it in our person because it will lead to personal failure. There has to be rules and order. Because I have to know the rule um, that I can work within the rule. And also, I need to be able to... Um, you need to know the rule that I work within the rule so that you can know what to expect. But you don't know what to expect. It's worse than somebody saying, well, I have to submit to this hierarchical leader. As I say, I've never seen it work in a church or a family. All the dysfunction family that I know, every dysfunctional family I know are lawless families. People just get up and do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. And the parents has no leadership value. The kids are in charge of themselves and they say what they want, when they want. I've, you bring me, I've never seen a family, never seen it work. It don't, it don't work in colonies, it don't work where they set up their compounds. It don't work in nothing in life. Never seen it work. You bring me a dysfunctional family, I guarantee the biggest problem is there is no leadership. The man has no head and no household. The woman is just speak off the cuff. She speak whatever she want to speak, whenever she want to speak it. The children are rude and disrespectful and miserable. Never work. Strong leadership bring all of that into subjection. Notice here Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. The Bible is speaking here of the end times and what will it be like. And we notice here that the Bible really describes anarchy, chaos. And if you're idealistic, you might believe that anarchy can be a great thing. It's a disaster in a sinful world. Because not only is there no leadership, sinful people take advantage of leadership vacuum. If you want to know what anarchy is, go look at what's going on in Libya right now. Libya is broken up into a thousand, I think over a thousand different factions. Total anarchy. When Syria started that war, when they started that war, I think it started, you know, encouraged by the American government. It now lead to total anarchy and people fleeing because when there's no state and there's all these crazy people, because we all have these crazy people. Imagine if the militias, you know, the militias are normally conservative leading because they believe that they need to overthrow the government if something goes wrong. But if you think of the militias in America, if they took over, war unto you and me, we're in so much trouble. We'd have to be fleeing this place, running off of here like rats on ships, going down, something like that. It would be terrible because when you meet these individuals, ne you never meet one. I've never met one of these type of individuals. And I'm, I'm not like, man, this person is scary. There's some twisted mentality. And imagine those people now take over the country. And those are the people that are in leadership. And there's every little county have a militia. And you don't know from what county to the next county what the rule is. Because every militia is fighting amongst themselves and with other militias to, to end to come up with their own an anarchical way of running the country. You never listen to these people and think, man, I'd like to live under the leadership of that guy. <laughs> You've never, I've never heard one of them thinking, yeah, I would like to live on the leadership of that guy. I would know exactly how things are. But at least here, you, in the, when the strong government and the government does the writing according to the Constitution, I'm not talking about when the American government does not live by the Constitution. I'm talking about when they're faithful to the Constitution. Things tend to work out better. You tend to be more peaceful. Let anarchy set off in America, you see what will happen. So let's read this text here. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come. Why? Why is it going to be so terrible in our time? Why is it getting worse? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They can see them in the mirror right now with their long hair and their makeup on their face, loving themselves. 
covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. This alone tells you what this is a total chaos, a breakdown of society, breakdown of the individual mindset. The mindset become untethered, it become um, loose, and the person has no bearing till they start to look in the mirror too much. If you spend too much time in the mirror, especially as a guy, you're in trouble. Now notice in verse 3 here, without natural affection, truce breakers, that means lawlessness, false accusers, um, false accusers, incontinent, that may have no self-control, fierce, despised of those that are good. This is lawlessness. Traitors, we see this happening so big time. When you have a country and everybody pledged to the constitution, we all pledge or we all pledge from a child if you're born here. And now your right is to defend the state or the group of people. I, I don't even like somebody to use the word state. I just like to use the group of people that all pledge to this constitution, pledge to defend each other from domestic and foreign enemies. That's what we all pledge to. So now here we are as a group of Americans. And now you have people that are false accusers and they're truce breakers. And also they 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 the false accusers, the traitors, basically, whatever truths they, they, they make, they break it. You can't trust nobody. You're in trouble. And that's where the problem is. This is the breakdown of the state. But it's a breakdown also of the family. Because people in the family, they take out. Oh, yeah, the verse 4, first, first word there, traitors. Person is traitor to their own, to whoever they swear to. This is the breakdown. And this is what we see. This is what we're actually fighting over right now because they're trying to do investigation to find out who sell the United States people out um, for money. Notice heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, the fakers, the hypocrites, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they that which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, led away with diverse loves lust ever learning and ever able to come to the knowledge of truth so what it is is saying they're le going into home and leading captive silly women see when you're in a church and there's some male leadership and you see this type of cretins coming around to try to fool up the women and abuse the kids strong leadership say is it might happen somewhere else, but not gonna happen here or they fight against it that's the power of strong leadership I see strong leadership is is that to me if whether people you know people have all kind of conspiracy theory about what's going on in our society, but to me when you see even this idea of the Mueller investigation and this investigation and that investigation, really it's the issue of trying to establish the rule of law, try to deal with people who are traitors. Whether you agree with what's going on, at least that's the premise of it. A, you know, person liberal or conservative, you can say that's the premise of it. Was there traitors who try to sell us out for money? And it's the same thing in your home. You have to know that's a part of your success in your home is that you have to go against this idealism. You have to teach your children not to believe in this idealism that we live in a sinful world and there can't be the breakdown of leadership because leadership acts as a strong protection and a, and a guarantee for success. When you have people that want to come, they want to abuse the kids, they want to um, fool trick the women, they want to steal, they want to do business without any type of um, oversight or stuff like that. What happens is that people get hurt, people get poisoned, all these things happen and there's no way to be able to protect the citizens. This is why one of the most basic fundamental principles in the Bible when it comes on to long life and success is in Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. It says, Under thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Part of all this is all about when we talk about hierarchical leadership and leadership in general is just the issue of honor. Give to he who is have the right to be given the, the respect because they serve a purpose. But in an I, I, anarchical mindset where people want to smoke all kind of weed and take drugs and do whatever, they want to have no leadership because they want to be free to steal, pillage, kill, murder, rape, do all this type of stuff and don't face any consequence. We don't believe in that. We believe in strong leadership. We believe that people need to 
have a day of reckoning and ultimately because we follow God we know that there is a day of reckoning coming that all men will have to answer for the deeds done in the flesh I pray that God may bless you that you may exercise strong leadership and strong self-control in your home and in your church and whatever place you have influence in because strong leadership is needed especially in this time of chaos and anarchy and you know if you do it you'll be blessed and the other people live in that way that you Failure will hit them all day long and you'll see the difference that God has blessed you to have good leadership and to respect authority and and to encourage order. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, I thank you for the blessings of this day. I thank you for the blessings, dear Lord, of your word and the way that you continue to lead us in paths that lead to success. That we may not be not only failure, we may not be failure in this world, but also that you may be able to save us in your kingdom where there is leadership, there is order, and the order is enforced. May you bless us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live tomorrow morning where we should talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.